Chapter 7.4, Systems of Nonlinear Equations in Two Variables. So now, once again, we're going to take those systems of linear equations that you've been seeing since algebra, hopefully, and make them a little bit more tricky. So first we worked with systems of three equations in three variables to expand upon the two equations in two variables. Now we're back to those two variables, but we're not working with linear equations. So we've worked with a lot of things that are nonlinear this, this semester. We've seen polynomials, we've seen exponentials, logs, absolute values. There's plenty of things that we've looked at that are not linear. And so now we're going to be applying those principles to our systems of two equations in two variables. Um, so to begin, what is a system of nonlinear equations? Essentially, a system of nonlinear equations, also called a nonlinear system, is a system of two or more equations in two or more variables containing at least one equation that is not linear. Now, quite often you'll see them where one of the equations is linear, and that's fine, but the point is as soon as there is something nonlinear, again, nonlinear meaning it's not a line, it's not just x plus y equals a number, or some multiples of x plus y equals a number. That's a linear equation. If it's anything besides that, if x is squared, if, if x is, if we're taking the log of x, if y is squared, if there's anything else happening besides simply adding and multiplying by a number, then we have a nonlinear equation. Um, so a solution to a nonlinear system in two variables like uh, just like a linear system, is an ordered pair. The solution set is a set of all such ordered pairs. This set corresponds to the intersection points of the graphs of the equations in the system. So just like, once again, with the three equations and three variables, we were looking at intersections of planes. Now we're back to, luckily, looking at things on a much easier to graph surface. So remember, in our in the stuff that would be gone over in chapter 7.1 which was covered in algebra uh, a system of two linear equations in two variables we're looking for a solution that looks like just the intersection point between two lines now one of our at least one of our equations is not a line so we can have for example um, possible solution sets if our system contains a parabola and a line could be no solutions, could be one solution, could be exactly two solutions. And this is just for a parabola and a line. We're not just working with parabolas here. We can have all different types of um, equations that we could see. So, um, how do we solve a nonlinear system? So to begin, we have the system x minus y equals negative 1. So this is this is a line, this is linear, but this one has x squared in it, which means it's a parabola, which means it's quadratic. So we've got a line and a parabola. So how do we know which of those three options that were shown on the previous page are we in this, sec uh, in this example? So we start by using the substitution method. So remember, in the previous chapter, I said I tend to default to elimination method even when working with two equations and two variables just because I like it more um, and it can become very tedious in to use substitution in higher order equations. Higher order meaning there's more variables, so like three variables instead of two. But when you're working with nonlinear systems, you're kind of stuck with this substitution method because very rarely will elimination work unless it's a very specific type of system because there's not so much matching happening. So we're going to use substitution all the time here, just in the same way that we used elimination pretty much all the time for the previous chapter. Um, so we solve one equation for one variable. It's our choice which one we pick. So in this case, I'm going to solve the um, I'm going to solve the parabola equation, the quadratic. So that's going to get me. I just add one to both sides to get y equals x squared plus one. Okay. Then we substitute that expression um, into the other equation. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace my y. So it will become x minus x squared plus 1 equals negative 1. And then 
simplify a little bit. So x minus x squared minus 1 equals negative 1 and solve for x. Now we've got an x squared, we've got an x. So what do I do? Well, first I'm going to add 1 to both sides to get because I can kind of cancel these out a little bit. And well, how do I solve an equation like this? There's kind of two ways, but your safer bet is always to remember as soon as you see the x squared, you should be thinking set equal to zero and factor. Set equal, I'm gonna keep saying this, equal to zero. Step one, step two, factor. That is how you solve this equation. As soon as you see an x squared, that's what you should think. Set equal to zero and factor. So I've set it equal to zero by adding one to both sides, and now I factor x times x minus 1 equals 0. And so when I solve, I get x equals 0 and x equals 1, right? Because that's x equals 0, and then x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1. Same stuff we worked with in the polynomials chapter, it's just factoring should be familiar. We won't be working with too big of factoring ish, uh, equations the way we did in that chapter, at least. It should be mostly just quadratic factoring is what you'll see here. Um, so we solved for that variable and then, uh, and so now we can solve for the remaining variable, which means take this x equals zero and x equals one and plug back in to either one of the equations, it's going to be a little bit easier to plug into the linear one, so that's what I'll do. So when I plug in 0, I get 0 minus y equals negative 1, so negative y equals negative 1, which is y equals 1. When I plug in 1, I get 1 minus y equals negative 1. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, that'll give me negative y equals negative 2, so y equals 2. Cool. Then check your solutions. I mean it. Check your solutions in both equations. We've already basically seen that it works in the first equation. That was how we found it. That was checking it. But we should still check both of these solutions in the other equation. So check them, please, because this is an example, just like when we worked with um, the, the logarithms in the previous unit, there will be times when you'll get extraneous solutions. So I'm not just telling you to check your solutions because you should always check your work. I'm telling you because sometimes your work will be right, but one of the solutions is still wrong because there are extraneous solutions. So don't just check them for thoroughness. Check them because you will be marked wrong if you don't sometimes, okay? So we plug back in. Um, when I do so, I'm going to get, so this is, uh, Make sure you're plugging in for the right variables, so this will be 0 squared equals 1 minus 1, and that is true, 1 minus 1 is 0. And uh, 1 squared is 1 equals 2 minus 1, yep, that's true. Okay, easy enough to check, took me two seconds, and I know for sure my answer is right now. And now we can draw basically what's going on. You can always attempt to draw a picture of the equations if they're equations you would know how to graph because that can help you find your solutions, verify your solutions, etc. It's, it is technically a way to find the solutions, but generally I'm going to ask you to find them algebraically, so you're going to have to do it algebraically. But having a graph in front of you can certainly help you verify whether you have the right answer. So we can see how our line and our parabola interact, and they do indeed cross at those two points. Um, now, here we can see this is one of the examples where you can actually use elimination. So like I said, rarely will this be an option, but if the nonlinear equations are, if both equations are nonlinear and they happen to be the same type of nonlinear, so they so in this case, they both have x squared and y squared. These are the same type of nonlinear equations. Specifically, these are ellipses. Um, then you can use elimination. So this is the one time when you're allowed to use elimination with nonlinear systems, or at least the one time where it works well. So we start by rewriting equations so that like terms are aligned, which is already done for us in this case. But just in case it had been something like y squared equals 26 minus x squared, then we would just rewrite it so that they are aligned. All right, that's already done for us here though. Just to make sure we've got our x's and our y's lined up and all good, and it's actually the same type of equation. Then, 
If necessary, multiply either equation by appropriate numbers so the sum will result in a zero coefficient for x or y. Again, just like we saw in the previous chapter. Here I'm going to multiply the red equation by negative 3 to get negative 3x squared minus 3y squared equals negative 78. Again, make sure you're multiplying every part of that equation by negative 3, including the 26. Then we can actually go through and find that sum. We add the equations together, it's going to cause that cancellation of our 3x's. So when I add 25y squared minus 3y squared, I'm going to get 22y squared and equals 22. And then I can solve for y fairly easily. So y squared equals 1. And then note this, y equals plus or minus 1. Plus or minus, plus or minus. Do not forget the plus or minus here. Because we are taking a square root of both sides. And whenever you place the square root in as part of solving an equation, if the square root is not present from the beginning, if you have to add the square root in there as part of solving a square, you must have the plus or minus 1. Because if y is positive 1, 1 squared equals 1. If y is negative 1, negative 1 squared also equals 1. So both of these are possible values of y that would cause this to be a true statement. So we get y equals plus or minus 1. Then we go back and we substitute in to find that remaining variable. So I'm going to take y equals positive negative 1 and I will plug in. So x squared plus 1 squared equals 26. So x squared plus 1 equals 26. So x squared equals 25. And uh, same x squared plus negative 1 squared equals 26 means x squared equals 25. This is going to happen quite often when you're working with these ellipses. Um, so we square root both sides. Once again, we are placing the square root there, so it better be plus or minus. Um, so we get x equals plus or minus 5. And so our solution set is every combination of these four things. 5, 1, 5, negative 1, negative 5, 1, and negative 5, negative 1. Every, every combination of these numbers should be present. So we get four total solutions. Because essentially what's going on is we have two ellipses that are, that are um, crossing each other in four places here. So uh, one of these ellipses, is it actually a circle? Yes. Uh, the this is the first one and this is the second. So the red, the, the ellipse that is blue but is made by the red equation um, is the circle and the ellipse that is red that is made by the green equation is not a circle but it's a, a more proper ellipse which is more uh, elongated in a way. Do you need to know how to graph ellipses? No, not necessarily, but uh, you should be vaguely familiar with them. Particularly circles, you do need to know how to graph. This is something that has gone over in um, algebra a little bit. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's something we can review together, but I don't have a proper lesson on it here. Just know that essentially, to graph a circle, radius, that's the radius squared and then um, uh, it's centered at 0, 0 because that's there's a whole circle equation um, that looks like this a squared equals r squared generally in this class you'll just see it centered at 0 so h k ooh that should be a minus I'm so sorry minus um, so h k is the center and r is the radius so in this case, the center was 0, 0. Most of the time, that's what you'd see in this class, is centered at 0, 0. This is not a circle, it is an ellipse, because we're multiplying x and y um, by some numbers. We're not going to talk about ellipses so much here, necessarily. But it's good to get an idea of what these things look like for your own like reference points. And of course, once again, I'm glad to go over it with you if you're curious or want some review of these topics. Um, so that is basically it for um, our nonlinear systems. Again, you'll see multiple different types of nonlinear systems. Here I've just got it with a uh, parabola and a line and two ellipses or two or a circle and ellipse or whatever. That's 
what's gone over here, but you can very well expect to see like on the lab, etc., um, uh, nonlinear systems that might involve a square root or might involve something else. So nonlinear system just means that there is something other than just multiples of x plus multiples of y. That's, that's what's going on. Is maybe you're squaring it, maybe you're cubing it, maybe you're square rooting it, whatever. Just expect to see those. Solve them by substitution or elimination if possible, really only possible in this situation. Um, we can also find uh, some interesting application problems, like finding the length and width of a rectangle whose perimeter is 20 feet and whose area is 21 square feet. Now, we've seen how to do this a bunch of times before, but now we're going to sort of manipulate it a little bit differently. So I'm just going to very briefly go over how to do this. So this problem would involve um, the perimeter equation, 2x plus 2y, or 2l plus 2w if you wish, would be equal to 20. And our area equation is xy equals 21. So we would take that, uh, these two equations, we can solve for x with one of them, plug back in, etc. Again, make sure you're actually checking your solutions. I didn't show the checking step in the previous problem. Graphing it is one way to check it though. Um, but there are going to be times where you'll get more than one solution and one of them will be wrong. So make sure you're checking.